Yeah, thank you. So I think the title is uh, Asymptotic Tensor Powers of, of Norm Spaces or maybe Banner Spaces. Uh, so this is joint work with Alex Recording in progress. Müller Hermes, who is here. And what we are doing is we are uh, defining an invariant which you can associate to any norm space and we, we compute it. And this invariant involves uh, the k tensor power and the limit as k tends to infinity. So let me just define the invariant first. So what we call the tensor radius of a, a normal space. So it's always in finite dimension, uh, norm space, either over the reals or the complex field, uh, dimension is finite, okay, and then we look at, at x k tensor power and, and somehow we look at this to the 1 over k and limit as k tends to infinity and uh, well, of course I have to tell you what this means. Uh, so x tensor k is clear, it's the algebraic tensor product uh, and when you have a norm space, when you have a norm on x, there are several norms that you can put on the tensor product or tensor power and, and this somehow quantifies how, how different they may be. So let, let, let's first uh, review these norms. So uh, how to define a norm on, on x? Yeah, yeah, this is just, uh, I, will, I will explain what it means. This is just an idea. Uh, I will give definitions now. This is just a, a well, something. So uh, what, what norm can you put on, on uh, tensor power? So, uh, well, if the, the natural thing to ask is that at least on pure tensors, it should be equal to uh, the product of elements so on, on rank one tensors, that's what its value should be. Uh, and, and this should hold both on x tensor k and also on the dual space. Okay, if you have a, a, a norm space, you have the dual space and you can go uh, back and forth, especially in finite dimension. So you, this is a reasonable condition to ask. And it turns out, if you ask this condition, there is a whole family of norms which are compatible with this, but there is a largest one and the smallest one, and uh, these are of interest, which are called the injective and the projective norm. Uh, so let me define them. So the largest, or let's the smallest uh, such norm is the injective norm. Okay, which I uh, denote by epsilon. So if I have an element in x tensor k, the injective norm of z, you just evaluate a uh, tensor product of linear forms onto z, and you maximize this over norm one linear forms. So maximum uh, of uh, phi one tensor phi k applied to z, over linear forms of norm at most one. Okay, so this is the injective norm on x tensor k. Why, why you, you mean I could say equal here? Yeah. If you want. Convex. It's, it's, a, it's okay. That's irrelevant, but it's but if Set was convex if you put inequality. Uh, okay, and then the largest such norm. So maybe yeah, th this somehow you, you you look at z from the outside, from the action of the dual space. The 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 uh, largest such norm. Uh, you will try to construct z from the inside. You 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 will take an infimum over all possible way to write z as a sum of rank one tensors. Uh, so the largest such norm is the projective norm 
NumPy. Okay, so let me take a new board from this formula. The projective norm of pi, of, of z, so you take the infimum over all possible ways to write z as a sum of rank 1 tensors, okay, and each, each time you have such a decomposition, you just can evaluate the sum of the corresponding norms and you minimize this quantity. Uh, x i1 times it's the sum over i here x chi i okay so uh, well it, it, it should be clear that uh, this inequality always holds and uh, among all norms which satisfy this condition these are the two extreme ones It's, it, it's achieved, yeah. Uh, okay, in finite dimensions, it at you a priori here the length is unbounded, but the, there is some kind of Karate-Odori kind of argument which tells you that you can restrict to some so some length which is essentially the dimension of the space, or squared maybe. Uh, so you, you it's achieved. But it's 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 a min if you want. Yeah, it is a min, yeah. Uh, well, because you po point-wise, only when you evaluate. Uh, okay, so this is a max which is less than a, than a mean. So you just have to check point-wise inequality, and if you if you evaluate, uh, if you evaluate, so you I have to check that the, the, the phi applied to this. Uh, you you just use triangle inequality, right? Th this if z has such a decomposition then you upper bound the phi applied to this sum by the sum of the phi's and uh, you get this, this quantity which pops out. Is it okay? Well, I the first is based on max and the second is based on min. And so I'm just a little confused, but maybe it's my stupidity. You, you, want, you mean uh, I, I can write soup if you want? No, 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 oh. no. Okay, so I will give you an example, okay, which uh, I, I prepare my, my talk, uh, I, I would have said a nice example, but now I will, I will tell you it's a pathological example, because it's, it's for k equal 2, so it's very special, as we learned this morning, but it's still, uh, it, it probably will clarify something. So, uh, if I take the simplest possible case, so k equal 2, and the, the space is a, is a Hilbert space, okay, so L to N, uh, so the, the space Kn uh, with the Euclidean norm. Okay, so then you, you may identify elements uh, in x tensor x or maybe in x star tensor x, but in this case it's the same if you fix some, uh, some isomorphism. You may identify this with elements uh, from Mn. Uh, and then the Injective norm corresponds to the operator norm for matrices, and the projective norm corresponds to the trace norm. But uh, it's very special, and it's pathological in the sense that for higher k, there is no such formula. And essentially, uh, it's hard to compute. For the same reason, it's hard to decide if a state is entangled or not. This is essentially the same problem. So, at least if it's pointwise hard to, to estimate, uh, we can try to, to look at the, at the worst possible value of the ratio between these norms, because these are norms in finite dimensions, so they are equivalent. There is some constants which compares uh, one with the other. Uh, so let's, let's introduce, let's give a name to this. Uh, let's denote rho k of x, to be the uh, sup or max uh, over elements in x tensor k of the ratio of z projective norm over z injective norm. And then I will take k tends to infinity, and then it's to get a proper limit, I will rescale this 
by taking the kth root. So this sub to the one over k. Uh, so and now uh, let's take the limit of this quantity as k tends to infinity, and this is what we call the tensor radius. OK, so uh, the limit exists uh, because you can, there is a, a subadditivity which, which makes the limit exist. Uh, and OK, there are many such definitions that you can come up in, uh, in uh, information theory. Uh, but the nice thing here is that we can compute it in many cases. And it's non-trivial in the sense that it tells you something about the space x. You can retrieve some properties of the space x from the value of, of this parameter. OK, are there questions on, on the definition? OK, so uh, the, the, the name uh, comes by analogy from the spectral radius formula. So, but uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a maximization problem over tensors. I don't know if you, it's OK? So what do we know about this part? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's not multiplicative, for example. It's not multiplicative, yeah. Uh, uh, then we can compute the value uh, in some cases, including the case of, of, of trace class or operator on space, if you, if, you, if you are asking. But it's not multiplicative, it's, yeah. OK, so uh, let me uh, maybe state some of our results, and, and then I will give some proofs. Estimates on the tensor radius. OK, so uh, it, it will involve the dimension of x, which I will denote by n, and uh, there are bounds. It's always well. It's 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 maybe it's not even clear that it's bounded to start with, but it is. Uh, it's always at most the dimension, and at least square root. And here, uh, the maximal value is achieved exactly when x is Euclidean. Okay, uh, with equality here. if and only if x is Euclidean, so if and only if there is a norm which is, if it, there is an inner product which, which induces the norm of x. Uh, OK. Uh, and if, if the space has symmetries, so for example, uh, if uh, the group of isometries of the space x, OK? So the group of linear maps which preserve the norm of x uh, acts irreducibly, so which covers most of the classical norm space which uh, pop up uh, in, in, um, in many contexts, then we can just, there is a, a formula for this, for this tensor radius, then uh, this is equal to n over the distance to being Euclidean, this is the infimum or mean of norm of t times norm of t inverse over all bi linear bijections from x to the Euclidean space of the same dimension. So for example, if the space is the LP space of dimension n, so kn with the usual p norm, then, uh, well, this is true. And then the value of the tensor radius is uh, n to the 1 minus 1 over 2 minus, minus 1 over p. So for example, if p 
equals 1 or infinity, then it's equal to this uh, minimal possible value. OK. Uh, so I, I will give you some, some proof ideas uh, behind these results. Is it OK? So uh, let me first reformulate the, the, the value. Well, so it's it's if you if you if you just know a priori that the norm on your tensor power uh, is reasonable in the sense that you know the value on rank one elements, this is the error uh, that you may do uh, in, in estimation. It, it, it's it's the rate at which the error grows asymptotically with the number of, of powers. So th there is always a huge discrepancy, and how, how large is it is, is quantified by this parameter. So intuition, I don't know if, if it's intuitive, but, uh, but it's, yeah, it's, uh, that's, what, that's what I can say to, to this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it, there, is, there is, as I, as I said, it's, 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 there is no intuition for, for in, in the same sense, for higher k. Uh, so, in other words, these quantities, they are hard to compute. Uh, and at least we, ca we can estimate uh, the, the, the maximal ratio between them. Uh, well, this is triangle inequality. So if you if you have any norm which satisfies this condition, okay, then uh, for every w possible way to write z as uh, a sum, the the the, the 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 norm of z will be less than this, qu this quantity, just by triangle inequality. Okay, so. Uh, if you, if you never saw this formula, I, I skip many things. Like, this is a norm. Uh, it's what I do, yeah? But, yeah, yeah, this. Uh, okay. So, let me. Uh, how does it, this don't want to go down, or? I cannot, if I stop, it's, it goes up again, or? Okay, uh, so I will just reformulate this, this value rho k of x a little bit. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, it's a soup, yeah, soup. yeah, soup. but it's not monotone. Uh, it's not monotone increasing. Yeah, actually, I will give an example if I have time of uh, a simple example when you see it's not. But it's a soup, yeah. Yes, I will also show this. Uh, yeah, but. In general, it, it, it's, it, it's not achieved at finite k. You have to go to infinity. Yeah. So, uh, let, let's, okay, so let's, let's maybe uh, give some examples which maybe will answer some of these questions. So, by definition, uh, this, this value before the limit is the supremum over z of uh, injective norm at most 1 of the projective norm of z. And OK, something I, I didn't say when I defined these quantities is that they are dual to each other in the sense that if you take the space uh, x to the k with the projective norm and you take the dual space to this, then it's the same as the injective norm 
on the dual space and vice versa. So it's, well, I mean, if, if, if of course, uh, the I started with a condition which, which was self dual, so it's kind of normal that this, this may occur, which means that you can write this projective norm itself also as a sup over uh, the dual space. So this is the same as a double supremum, v in x tensor k and phi in x star tensor k, each of them of injective norm at most one, of just phi acting on z. This is just a reformulation of the, of the same quantity. So, okay, uh, I will first give uh, an estimate which shows that indeed uh, this quantity is finite and bounded by the, by the dimension of x. So let's, let's give some estimates. The first one, let's, let's prove this. Okay, and uh, one way to see, to, to see that this is true is to use what is called an hour bar basis of the space x. So consider EI an hour bar basis of x. So what, 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 what is this? It's a basis of, of vectors uh, of norm at equal to 1, such that the dual basis, so whenever you have a basis in the, in the space x, there is a dual basis in the dual space, and the dual basis also at, at norm 1. Okay, so norm in x, x, x here and, and x star here. So now, if you, if you have any elements in, in, in tensor powers, you can always expand them in, in this tensor product of basis, right? So if, if z lives in x tensor k, you can decompose z as a sum over i1, ik of some scalars, E i1 tensor E i k, same for phi, mu i1 i k, E i1 star tensor E i k star. And now, uh, if you have the condition that the injective norm is at most one, in particular, it, it implies that all these scholars, they, have, they are at most one, okay? Because you can retrieve them by acting against uh, a product of norm one linear forms. So all these numbers are less than one, and when you pair them, you are adding n to the k such numbers, okay? Because uh, acting this acting on this is, is, is zero unless the indices are the same. So it follows that z uh, phi acting on z is at most n to the k. Uh, so if you take the, the nth root, you, you get the kth root, you get uh, this value of n as an upper bound. If, so this gives a uh, rho k of, of z or of, of x less than n, and so the limit also. If you are a bit smarter, you can show that it's k minus 1 here. And, and this shows that the value of n for the Euclidean space cannot be achieved at a finite k. You have to go to infinity. Okay, so now let's, let's work another example uh, when uh, we will see that it's not monotonically increasing, which is maybe the simplest non-Euclidean space, which is the s the, the s on R2 the, the infinity norm. So let's, let's do this in some detail. Okay, so let's work, let's consider x to be R2 uh, with the L infinity norm. So, uh, so what we was right, L infinity of dimension 2. Uh, so the nice, thi the nice thing with an uh, infinity norm is that when you compute the injective tensor product, it's still an, an infinity norm. This is something which is not hard to check. 
So x tensor k with the epsilon norm, with the injective norm, is the same as L infinity 2 to the k. So in this case, we have a formula, which I said it's not true in general, but this is a case for which there is a formula, one of the few cases where there is a formula. And moreover, uh, the unit ball for L infinity looks like this. And the dual unit ball is a rotated square, which means it's also, it's also a square. If you just apply rotation by 45 degrees, it's the same thing. So in other words, through the matrix H, the Adamar matrix, okay, uh, this matrix is an isometry from X to X star, and which means if you tensor K times this matrix, it will be, well, an asymmetry for, from X uh, injective to tensor K injective to X star tensor K injective, which is the same thing as the dual to X tensor K projective. So which means we, we can also compute through this formula the case projective tensor power for this particular example. So if, if you put all this together, what you get uh, for this space is the following formula. Uh, this is, uh, so let, let me put a, a case power here. So I I don't, this I don't have to, have a, to write a case root uh, in this formula. This will be the supremum, so th there is a double supremum, but twice over the unit ball of, of L infinity, which means over signs. You, have to, you, you are optimizing over signs right, over alpha in minus 1, 1 to the 2 to the k, supremum over beta, same thing. And what you are optimizing is, is alpha acting on, on beta, but with this map in between, or h tensor k alpha scalar beta. This is what you are optimizing. And well, one way to bound this is to use Cauchy Schwarz, right? Because uh, this is less than, uh, now here I'm writing the Euclidean norm, okay, which these are sine vectors, so this is equal to 2 to the k over 2. And uh, the Adama matrix is also an isometry, or maybe up to square root of 2. For the Euclidean norm. So this also is equal to uh, 2 minus k over 2 times the norm of alpha, and, and this, this is uh, also uh, the same value. So if you put everything together, what you get is 2 to the k over 2. Uh, and this is sharp. If k is even, then if you just take alpha equal beta equal 1, 1, 1, minus 1 piece po power, this is sharp, be because this corresponds to a uh, eigenvector of the matrix H tensor H. So in this case, um, which means that rho 2k of x is equal to square root of 2, so it's, it's also the, li the limit, so this gives the square root of dimension in this case. Uh, but if k is odd, this cannot be true because uh, this will be some rational number and this is square root of 2, so it's irrational. So you see that here uh, it's, it's not monotone, monotone increasing. It, it's, it's, it tends to, to square root of 2. It's constant for even numbers, but, but it's below strictly for odd numbers. Okay, so one thing that we can remember from this example is that it was very useful to introduce a Euclidean structure. I mean, it was already there, but Cauchy's four was the key. And in general, the, for all the, our estimates, the key will be to, to find a right Euclidean structure uh, on the space X, on which a priori there is no, it's just a normal space. There is no 
no Euclidean structure on it. Okay, so now uh, it I will probably uh, spend some time on the case of Euclidean spaces because I just motivated how important they are for, for our estimations. So I mean, uh, unless you have questions on uh, this example. So now I, I, will, I will explain you how to compute the value uh, for Euclidean space. Okay, so I need to show that the tensor radius of Euclidean space of dimension n is equal to n or we already saw the, the lower bound, the upper bound. Uh, and to connect with the topic of the conference, this will be proved through random tensors. Okay, so uh, random tensors will be the tool to, to prove this. Uh, and more specifically, we will use the fact that random tensors are very entangled. So let me explain what this means. Uh, so okay, so on the space, I'm working on the space L2 to the k. So of course, if you start with the with the Hilbert space, there is another norm on this space which is even more elementary, which is the Hilbert space tensor norm. Okay. So uh, in addition to pi and epsilon, there is this other norm. In this case, it's only in this case that it makes sense. So let me denote it by norm sub h, or the Euclidean tensor norm. Okay, if you if you fix any orthonormal basis here, you declare the tensor power of the basis to be orthogonal, and this defines the norm. Uh, so it's it's between epsilon and pi. And uh, by duality, there is a, a Cauchy-Schwarz inequality here, namely that the norm of z is less than square root of pi norm epsilon norm. OK, so I want to find elements for which this ratio is big, but by, by this inequality, I mean, I can just uh, look at on one half of this interval somehow. This is greater than the norm h over the norm epsilon squared. Okay, so I need to find, this is by just, by this inequality. So I need to find a tensor for which the uh, Euclidean or Hilbertian norm is greater than this, this injective norm. And maybe this is perhaps familiar to people who are used to work in quantum information. This is the maximum overlap of the vector z with tensor product of unit vectors. Unit vectors of z x1 tensor xk. OK, so uh, let me write a lemma which, which uh, explains what this means. So uh, for every dimension n and number of factors k, okay, there is a tensor z in L to n tensor k, uh, which is of unit norm, unit Hilbertian norm, uh, and for which this quantity is small, but very small, some constant square root of k log k, well, some polynomial in k, that's what matters, over k n to the k over 2. Uh, and, 
and the lemma implies what we want, okay? Because if we apply this inequality to this particular z, what you get is, so uh, it's, it's 1 over this, okay? And k over 2 uh, over this poly k square. So this was a lower bound from for rho k uh, to the k, so for, for this choice of z. So if you take the case root, you get something which tends to n as k tends to infinity. So this is the, the lower bound we want. And so how do you prove the existence of such a z? Well, you can take it at random, yeah? So just uh, uh, to, to, co to connect, to compare with uh, what random meant this morning, so if I take a z at random here, I mean, it's, uh, it's on the sphere, so it's uh, the, uh, the high measure. Uh, so proof a random z works, but it's not with probability one. It's, it's, it's only makes sense to work with high probability. And proving this is a consequence of standard estimates. Uh, so you want to maximize, you want to an upper bound on this quantity, which is a supremum over spheres. And you can just discretize the sphere and use uh, tail estimates for Gaussian measure, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay, now maybe uh, a question is, uh, can you de-randomize? Can you find an explicit example which, which works? Uh, so, actually two questions. Can you, can we de-randomize? Okay, because this tensor which seems to be extremal in some sense, it would be nice to maybe to have uh, some explicit examples. And uh, maybe a, a more minor issue is, can you remove this k log k? Okay, there is a lower bound always of, of greater than 1 to the, n to the n over, to the k over 2. If you just expand z in the computational basis, the sum of the squares of the amplitudes has to be 1. So just this gives you a lower bound, which is of, of this magnitude. Uh, and uh, the answer to this is yes in the real case, and we don't know in the complex case. And let me, okay, maybe I will switch here. Uh, so yes to both over the reals, and we don't know over C. And we don't know even for, for n equals 2, so for qubits. OK. Uh, and wha what, what happens over the real? So, OK, I, I will just give a proof by buzzwords. So I, I will give you two buzzwords uh, to, to, to arouse you. Uh, so the first is Clifford algebras. And the second is matrix product states. So if you combine this, 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 these ideas, uh, it works over the reals, but uh, not over the complex field. OK, so in the remaining time, I, I just want to, to uh, say something about uh, uh, generalization of this tensile radius of a space. So let me take a new board for this. Maybe this one. Okay, so uh, if, you, if you look at the definition of the, of the parameter rho k, okay, it's you maximize the ratio of norms, of two norms over the space x to the k. 
So if you wanted the norm of the identity map as an operator from X injective to X projective. Okay, rho k uh, X is the norm of identity of X tensor K as a map operator norm from epsilon to pi. Uh, 1 over k. But you can ask the same question. You can try to compute the same thing for any map, not identity. So let's do this. So uh, define, so let, let me write a different letter for this. To, for if you have a map T between two norm spaces of finite dimensions, linear map, uh, define 2k of t as the norm of t to the k uh, epsilon to pi. So, uh, okay, you, you, you take a supremum over the injective tensor power of x of the projective norm of the image under t to the k, so it's a norm in, in y. So now the both, both space both space enters the picture. Uh, and, and similarly, you can define the limit, which also exists. So if this is a tensor radius of the operator T. Uh, and uh, in this case, what corresponds to the, to the upper bound of N, wi which we had before, it's a bound which involves the nuclear norm of T. So the, the easy bound is uh, to infinity of T, which is bounded by the nuclear norm. So well, something we, we hear a lot these days. Nuclear norm of T, uh, nuclear norm is just defined in the, in the same way as the projective norm is defined, so you take the infimum over all possible ways to write t as a sum of rank one operators of the sum of the corresponding uh, quantities. So infimum over the ways to write uh, t as a sum of, so let me use this uh, quantum notation, sum of yi xi star. Okay, uh, and uh, well, this quantity is, is is more scary because it's it it's, it's, it involves the limit of uh, of quantities which are hard to compute already for small values of k. While this is, uh, if you want, it's a single letter expression in T, so in some sense it's nice. And uh, for this reason, we want to understand in which cases this inequality is an equality. In, in this case, we can claim that we can compute this value uh, in a way which uh, does not involve any limit, so it, it's at least theoretically possible. Uh, so let's, let's, let's give a name to this property. We say that a couple x, y of normal spaces has the nuclear tensorization property If for every map from T to Y, the spectral radius is equal to uh, the nuclear norm. And we saw that in the case of uh, tensor radius of, of a space, the Euclidean space was somehow extremal. And for this reason, this will hold when x or y is Euclidean. This may be a bit surprising. That if, if both are Euclidean, you may believe, but it's, it's enough that one of them is Euclidean. So uh, theorem, if x or y is Euclidean, then uh, this is true. The pair as this property, so in particular, it means we can compute this value. Uh, and 
uh, we actually conjecture that the converse is true. Oh, let me, we ask the question, uh, or question maybe, is the converse true? And we have some uh, partial evidence towards this uh, conjecture. So in many cases, we know that uh, if, if, in, in, if a pair has the NTP, then one of the space must be Euclidean. So uh, I'm, I'm, do I have still? Yeah, OK. Uh, so I just want to, to say uh, some idea behind the proof of, of uh, these estimates, or also the fact that only the Euclidean space maximizes the value, which is, of course, connected to this. Uh, so as I, as I said, the, the trick, the idea is to force a Euclidean structure onto the spaces that you work with. And uh, so there are, there are several ways to do this. In, in, uh, in Banner space geometry, there are all kind of ellipsoids that you can associate to a given normal space. And uh, what we do uh, uh, in some of the results is playing with these ellipsoids, especially the maximal volume ellipsoid inside the unit ball and the minimal volume ellipsoid which contains the unit ball. These are two dual quantities which are important from this context. Uh, and okay, so I think I, I will stop here. Uh, thank you. <laughs>